There we go. All good. All right. Um, all right. So, so the first thing that was on the agenda for today was just a, an update on the CIS benchmark. Just want to let everyone know. Um, we had, we've had a couple of meetings, um, uh, really haven't gone over too much. There have been a few comments, Kyle put a few comments in. If anybody has any comments on the benchmark, um, you know, please go ahead and add that in. Um, but we are uh, going to go ahead and put the benchmark out, uh, publish version 1.0 uh, in the hopes that we get some more um, uh, uh, community involvement on that. And uh, hopefully we get some feedback and uh, uh, just go ahead and quickly release a version 1.1 .1 of that. Um, so if anybody has any comments on it, I know uh, doesn't seem like a lot of notifications are going out on that, uh, but uh, you know, just let me know if you have any questions. So uh, I don't know uh, that there's much else to add unless anybody has any questions about what's going on there. Or where I, I actually do have something to add, Sid, if you don't mind. Um, yeah, please. So, so I a, a couple of days ago I added um, a new, I rather I proposed a new recommendation um, in the in the initial setup section. To to set Ross host name to localhost, um, and the the idea behind that was to have a more secure default configuration where you know Ross Ross master listens on all interfaces by default, which I think is is um, an unfortunate default behavior. So that's that's something that I, I specifically was looking for uh, some input on if if. We can discuss that now, or we can discuss that on the CIS uh, workbench. Um, but I, I wanted to call that out. OK, okay. so uh, you can see here the, mm. the issue on Jira that uh, Gerardo created. Um, he's saying here um, the approach regarding oppressing the file. And there was some conversation already uh, that I didn't read yet. So. Uh, j hold on, just 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 a second, I mean, we are just so everyone is following along here. Uh, we're hopping to the third agenda item uh, about um, uh, compressing the permissions document, where we've hit sort of where we've hit some size limits in uh, uh, parameter sizes for DDS. Uh, go ahead, Jaime. So let us read um, the comments. Uh, Thanks for yeah. doing this, by the way. I, I I don't think anyone else has access to that. Am I, am I correct? What is? You have the, to be a member of the team. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I thought. Okay, very good. Well, okay, here we go. The handshake yeah. request message token. This is yeah. I'm really just trying to figure out if we need to prepare for for doing anything different, or if this is something that's just going to be handled by. I think it's good. implementation, which is actually a great question for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't I didn't read this comment yet, so uh, I wouldn't say you have to do nothing at all, uh, probably. Because well, you just provide the file and the uh, the DDS implementation is going to compress that for you. I don't think. Uh, it looks like we would use a different plugin, or it looks like you version the plugin name basically, so you can have backwards compatibility. Do you read that the same way? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, that's good. I can send you a copy or maybe paste this comment in the into the notes. Yeah, if if you don't mind, I think that would be helpful. Just just to kind of, I, I just want to keep a pulse on the direction that's going. Mm -hmm. Okay, that that's right. thank you. So I'm going to stop presenting and I copy this to the meeting notes. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, so I think I I think that closed out the the CIS. Uh, Agenda item as well, unless anyone wanted to continue talking about that, I can move to the uh, SROS API bit. Alrighty, um, so we 
as part of the secure launch work we're doing, um, we're, we're integrating with uh, the SRS2 utilities in a way that makes it more of a library uh, where it, it never really was. And it's, and it's nice to see it becoming that. Um, but we, as part of work in Foxy, we were, we tried to uh, rip out all the API that, uh, oh, hey Roger. Um, we tried to rip out all the API that was accidentally public and, and actually curate that. And, and really the point we got that to was making none of the API public because we had no users. Um, now we finally do. And, and so we have a driver behind uh, some of the functionality that we have in SROS2 and wanting to make that public. So I, I did propose a pull request that I have linked in the agenda um, that we, we could use some reviews on in, in order to enable the secure launch stuff. And, and that's really all I wanted to, to raise. Yeah, I'm very happy to see uh, uh, SROS2 API being used outside of SROS2. And totally, uh, yeah. I didn't get a chance to review this yet. I'm planning on looking at it in the next couple of days. Uh, but I really appreciate the initiative and I'll go over both the pull request and the changes to the API document. I don't know if they're exactly the same or not. They, uh, they are, but they, I will point out um, the pull request. I, I'm really just trying to enable Ted, the, like the secure launch stuff. I'm not trying to do everything in the document. So it, it's, a, it's a subset of it. Like none of the policy work is done. I said it's just really the key source stuff. So keep oh, that. That I, I think that would be a pretty big pull request, so I don't want to make anyone review that. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> well, I think that, that's actually kind of the end of our agenda here. Um, Sid, you want to take over here? Yeah, so the only thing I had left over was uh, there were a couple of old action items. Um, we're still working on the size of the permission files. Um, Although I, that's something, I am curious about the current state of that. Mikhail, did you guys make good progress on actually optimizing those? Oh, so we we didn't submit any like uh, pull request to change uh, the state of things. Uh, I'm going back. Sorry, I'm scrolling in the document. Um, so, oh, there is no link to the issue. I have a pull request somewhere when we were working on the. Uh, but long story short, like we explored several ways to make these files smaller. Uh, some of them are along the lines of the things that were mentioned on this course about like permissions that are necessary but should not be necessary. So trying to focus on the ROS2 side of things where like the behavior of RCL CPP or RCL is not necessarily the one we would want to, or at least it's requesting more permissions than it should need. Um, and then on the, I'm trying to find the link at the same time if I have. I have a summary somewhere on that issue. I just need to find it. Um, no, sorry. Sorry for okay. throwing you the bus here. No, no, no. <laughs> you you, you um, don't need to find it now. All right. So uh, I have the comment here. Uh, how do we share that? I drop that in the chat here. No, you know what? I drop it in the document on the action item. This way it's going to survive. It's going to outlive this meeting. Um, yeah, so what I looked into is uh, so several ways of uh, lowering the size. Uh, one of them was to allow, basically say that a given participant, if it has any topics in its private namespace, it most likely should be allowed to publish to those because they're kind of like dedicated to that participant. So that first approach allowed us on this total of three demo to go from 96k to 91k, which is an improvement, but like not that big of a difference. And um, and so I also put in the comments, like in the foldable sections, like the changes I actually made to the code to make that happen. And uh, uh, yeah, so then the other things we did 
Oh yeah, so that's it, sorry. Uh, the first one was to say that uh, basically if you have any actions, uh, like cross actions, you just allow participants, you give them permission to publish to all the topics and services related to these actions instead of like having to call out explicitly. One. Yeah. Uh, and so this is the one that gave a small size gain, but only like 5K. Uh, the other one uh, was to actually say everything in those private namespace should be allowed. And that allows us to actually treat all, uh, all the things for parameters, like, you know, like parameters are all like private services. Uh, and this is a very significant of submissions for a given system. And so for this one, we actually went from like 91K to 33K. So we kind of divided by three. Uh, so this was pretty good. Uh, we are considering, we, we didn't discuss or decide like if we wanted to push those changes upstream, it was more for experimental purposes. Sure. Um, another one that saved us a couple of case, I don't have the exact number, was to make it, I guess we should make a utility called Ugly XML, uh, which basically removed all the carriage returns, all the spaces, that just oh. make one big XML string. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and this actually saved quite some space because like uh, quite, a, quite a lot of stuff is indented there. Yeah, I mean, there's a reason that's a, there's a reason that's standard practice in web development, you know. Yeah, for sure. And so, so yeah, this saved another couple of case. So I think the outlook of that is, uh, if we decide to to say that a node, everything under a node's namespace, private namespace, should be allowed for that node in both publish and subscribe, uh, it would solve most problems uh, as far as like permission size is concerned for these systems, then it's a matter of like, is it violating too much like the idea of keeping like declaring being explicit and declaring only what we need versus uh, making an assumption that is everything in the private space is okay for that node. So I guess that's something we could discuss that uh, and like if we agree that it's an okay assumption, we could then open it up to the community and the main was to developers to see if that's something that would be okay with as well. I mean I so so that includes any any topic that is private to the node, right? And that includes that includes any parameters, right? Yep. Um, this is basically everything you would declare as like tilde slash something. Uh, is that anything else? I think that's it. Yeah. So right now it would take care of uh, yeah all the parameter stuff for the um, lifecycle nodes. It will also add all the lifecycle services and lifecycle events. And like that's basically it. But then you can think of like any node that actually has stuff on a private namespace like this would apply to those as well. And I guess that's where it would be more specific to uh, to like specific nodes. Maybe a node want to say, oh, if my node functions properly, it has to have, like, it should have only these private topics. And if another node decides to say, hey, like if a node bar say, hey, I'm publishing to slash through slash awesome topic you should listen to, um, like, should that like should that be allowed and should like bar actually be allowed like be allowed access to that topic well I, i'm not quite following you there slash who slash bar would be oh no sorry so, so that, like basically you would have like uh the bar node like let's say the bar node is a node that exists and has like only oh, like, um, parameters gotcha. topics and okay. the full node comes and say hey i'm also publishing slash bar slash awesome topic uh should that be a topic accessible to bar by default yeah that's awkward i mean i don't see a reason why foo would ever do that but it can happen yeah I mean, I, I think we probably all feel similarly in that we'd rather not do this. <laughs> but, but it's a question of, of, I mean, obviously the compression is going to help, 
right? And and this is all sort of trying to give us more headroom here. Compression is is one way to get more headroom. Um, uh, trying to optimize the permissions files will just give us more headroom. Um, I think the only real solution to this problem is 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 where we move this out of the the handshake, right? But that's that's a ways away. And so it's really a question of do we need this to do more headroom now? Because if we do, there, we don't really have any other options. You, you know what I mean? I mean, it's kind of like the same discussion that we had with sharing the participant uh, with multiple nodes. We didn't really have much of an option. Yeah, that is true. I mean, like, we explored several options, and like one of them could be to like just reduce the size in other ways. Uh, one of them could be to say, "Hey, let's wait for compression to be there and see what size of system would be impacted uh, if we just like if decent size system could still like live with that, or if they actually need this extra optimization on the roughly side." And it's currently pretty unclear. Like the total, but two like the total but demo is just one such application. Uh, we don't have any other like example applications where we could test that on. And we haven't and we haven't heard this complaint from other people, right? It's just something we've run into ourselves on this project in particular. Yes. Exactly. I feel like the uh, I mean the thing that has no security ramifications is is the uglifier, right? And and actually like doing this sort of pseudo compression on our own. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I feel like that's a way to get a little more headroom, but it doesn't sound like it's done. Yeah, so there is that, and there is also like optimizing just the actions or like this thing like that. Like just say, okay, like yeah. we we don't need like we can still call out things explicitly, but just give like pretty wide permissions to them rather than yeah having to individually call out like specific topics and services. Yeah. We can just say, okay, every action topic and service has published subscribers, yes, and, and based on that, uh, we can still save some space without having to be like fully wildcarding stuff. Yeah, I, I, think, I think that approach makes more sense. If, now, if we start hearing, as people start adopting this, if people start actually running, mm -hmm. we may need to, we may need to mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. But I think until we do, that's, that's trading a lot of security for perhaps a benefit that no one will realistically do, you know what I mean? Yeah, that was kind of my opinion as well. That's why I, I, I hanged on to it until we had like this discussion with Jaime and Gerardo. And to see like what are the actual real options rather than this like workaround. And uh, yeah. and yeah, so I'm I'm happy to keep holding it off and uh, help moving forward with the compression and potential out of band, like out of handshake yeah. approach. And, well, uh, do we do we want to look into doing the 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 uglification step when we sign the permissions document? I, I mean, I like the idea of having a plain text one, but when we sign it, it gets kind of hard to read anyway. What do you think? Yeah, that sounds fair by me. Anyone else? You're talking about the minification that yeah. they can. Yeah, yeah, minified XML. Yeah. Hampers readability, but I mean, if you're digging through Wireshark to monitor stuff, you probably expect to have to <laughs> some some difficulty. <laughs> yeah. Is it worth it? I mean, it would be easy. Yeah, Ruffin, I don't remember the exact numbers. Do you remember how much we saved by? Uh, like l reducing, removing all white spaces and like new lines. I thought our max minification was something like thirty percent. That's pretty good. Um, compression. So, um, I think for the navigation to Perlbot example, it it brought us back under the UDP limit for a monolithic context. So maybe I, I do really like your idea kind of applying that only 
uh, only at the, when signing and to keep the actual XML file readable. Uh, yeah. So maybe we could explore that. Uh, I don't know. I don't know who like Rafin if you if you're interested in like uh, providing code for that or if one of us should like dedicate some time to it. But I think that would be interesting to like just rerun that on the total bot demo and confirm like how much space we save and just submit a PR on SRS to for that. I'll take an action to to log an issue so we can track this at the very least. Yeah, that's a good incremental step. <laughs> So uh, just looking at the other action items then, um, I think we kind of have a way forward with that one. Um, there was an old item out to uh, issue guides for vendors on a bold disclosure policy that was in my court. Um, we just haven't pushed that along. I don't know if anybody's seen a need for that yet. Uh, let's continue to keep that one open. Um, there was also the next item was uh, moving the security file system environment utilities outside of RCL. Um, I know we've had a couple of discussions on that. I don't know that that's gone anywhere. It was issued via the, the issue is linked there. The action items. Yeah, I remember we, th we said we'd look at that after Foxy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it's been out there for a while. And I don't know if there's because there was a, actually I think it was a request from one of the other working groups originally. Is this one I should just continue to carry? Yeah, I, I think we need to look into it. It needs some investigation. Yeah, I think now that the refactor like RCL had some change to allow the participants and the change to enclaves and everything and we hold it off waiting for that to land yeah. and be stable enough uh, but I think yeah we should take an action at the item to like have looked at it to actually discuss it uh, one more and hopefully last time uh, at the next meeting agreed All right, so I will, uh, I'll actually try and uh, remember to send something out in Matrix a few days beforehand so that we can uh, actually take a look at it and then discuss it. And I'll add it to the agenda for the next one. Um, and then the last thing was we had, we've had off and on touched on the idea of security use cases. I haven't seen anything move on that. I'm not sure that uh, this, this uh, I'm almost tempted to close this one out because I think it was a very general issue that we're, you know, as we're coming up with individual use cases, uh, we're just kind of hitting them along the way. Uh, I don't know if anybody has any specifics or thoughts on where to go with that one. Right now, I'm trying to um, go through the AutoWare stack to um, see what, what what's feasible in like in enabling ROS2. Um, so I've got AutoWare ported to compiling on Foxy and I'm working on the getting the simulation running but then the next step is the um, auditing the computation graph for like an autonomous vehicle like, that would be using AutoWare and what that would entail um, in terms of uh, um, are there any performance hits or do we run into more issues like we had with TurtleBot or um, that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's a big stack. That'll be really interesting. That was dashing, right? You're you're porting it to Foxy, is that right? Um, the, the there's already been some effort that just needs a little more polish. Um, okay. Um, but yeah, it was it currently AutoWare is um still targeting dashing, but I think once they're done with their uh, finished with their um. Uh, their demo that they're targeting for October, the uh, valet parking. Uh, mm -hmm. They'll be migrating. Please do share okay. as you as you learn stuff. Yeah, I was actually going to say the same thing. I, I don't know if that's, like, I don't want to 
call it an action item, but I feel like, uh, I mean, everybody probably would be interested in, in any updates on what you find out as we go along. I'm just going to want to carry that along as like when you have some, the chance to update us on what's going on uh, and what the results were, and, you know, the impact of enabling security on the autoware stack, that'd be pretty, really interesting. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll chime in on the, the matrix when I have uh, some stuff uh, pushed. Cool. So that takes us to the end of the list and just about the end of our, our, our time. Unless anybody has anything else, I think uh, that's all that we have on the agenda, at least. I guess there's one item uh, that, uh, I mean, not to offload any work to anyone. Uh, there is... Uh, an issue that has been pending for a couple of months. I mean, there have been like test failing on test security for apparently months. We don't know how long. Uh, I still didn't get a chance to go through them. Uh, I'm hoping as well that like uh, looking into it from separate set of eyes would help people like get more familiar with the security itself. So if anyone is interested in digging a bit more into test security and these test failures, I'm so there, there are issues logged. I don't know if I should just add it to the document or something, or uh, but so that we can like look into them. We have some. I think they're only with fast RTPS and only on Linux. Um, but we have like a couple of tests failing sporadically, uh, but on a fairly regular basis. That we should look into. Is that one of the ones that's assigned to the security working group, the GitHub user? Yes, it is. Did you see the link I shared in Riot a while back that actually allows you to look at that list? It was super helpful. Yeah, yeah, that's the one I actually sent a, a couple back a couple months before. <laughs> oh well, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I thought I discovered something <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh, uh, I really hope that there was something nicer than a GitHub search query for that. Uh, but I I looked at Apparently several not, solutions yeah. to display it in a in a nicer way, and like I saw nothing that is like very convenient. Like either we need to have access to all the repos we're tagged on to have like any kind of like project or something to track those. Um, and uh, the GitHub user would, won't have that, I think. Uh, and so for now, yeah, the GitHub search query is like the only way I found uh, to list those. And uh, and yes, so but yeah, like I think most of the other ones assigned to the working group have been addressed. Uh, and I think this one is like there are two issues that are more or less like saying the same thing. Yeah, one's in SROS, detail. the other one's in the in the testing uh, repo, right? Yeah, so I think now both of them have been like so the SROS two one has been migrated. So I think both of them are on test communication now. Oh okay. Uh, but uh, yeah, like that's basically the idea. These two pending issues are one and the same. Yeah, can you add a link to that to the agenda so we can we can track it? Sure. I'm going to do that right now. And that was it. Sorry. That, that was my extra point of discussion. OK. Uh, anybody else have anything? All right. I guess we're good for another two weeks. And uh, I'll update the, the um, agenda for the next meeting with a few of the things we talked about. and. Uh, I guess we'll see you in two weeks. Thanks, everybody. Great Thank chatting, you. as always. Sounds good. Thanks for organizing. See you next time. See ya. Thank see you. Bye-bye. Take care. Take care, guys. See you. Bye, see you.